Ooh, ooh, strange gorilla. Hey guys, it's Mint here, bringing you another challenge run. In my last challenge run for the Barbarian Throwing Weapons Only, which I'll link in the description, so definitely check it out if you haven't, nothing like throwing stuff at your problems to deal with them. I requested some ideas that you, the viewers, would like to see for future challenge runs, and I will take a crack at it. And coming in through the comments was a Diablo 2 poison only run. So I did what anyone would naturally do. I ordered a pizza and watched some anime. <clears throat> I mean, I started up Diablo in an effort to find out. Can you beat Diablo 2 poison only? After some digging through the sacred archives, aka the internet, I discovered that we have a few possible options to achieve this. We have the Amazon, who can learn Poison Javelin at level 6 and Plague Javelin at 18. The Necromancer, who can learn Poison Dagger at level 6, Poison Explosion at level 18, and Poison Nova at level 30. And finally, we have the Druid, who can learn Poison Creeper at level 2 and Rabies at level 18. I decided on the Druid as he is the only one that has the ability to cause poison damage without it needing any form of physical damage to apply the poison, keeping the run as close to poison only as possible without any need for physical damage to apply the poison. With our class being selected, we are ready to jump on in and get the ball rolling. However, there is one glaring problem. Poison Creeper is a level 2 skill. And the only way to get to level 2 would be to kill things. But I need to kill things with poison only. Huh. That leaves us with an interesting little dilemma. I do, however, have a little solution to Diablo's attempts to stop us from doing this run. The solution is simple. Run right outside of the camp to find a shrine. Don't matter if the shrine you need. If not, exit and enter. Head to the same shrine again. See if it is the shrine you're looking for. If it is, voila! If not, repeat this process until it is the shrine you are looking for. The reason this happens, you ask? Simple. Each time you reload the instance of the game, the shrine gets randomized. Pretty neat, eh? Take that, Diablo, in your attempts to stop us from completing this run. After a few attempts at finding the right shrine, I finally came across it. The Poison Shrine. Ah, just look at it. Such magnificence. Now all that's left to do is gather up a bunch of sacrifices, <coughs> I mean friends, friends, to enjoy the shrine and all its glory with me. I ventured out, made a bunch of friends and brought them all back to the shrine with me. <laughs> we gathered around the shrine, sang some songs, and Odo, oh no, they all died from a mysterious illness. We will just sweep that under the rug and pretend like nothing ever happened. And then it is time to grab ourselves the poison creeper and finally begin the run. As removing all our friends untimelessly from our inner circle, this has given us enough XP to hit level 2, allowing us to skill the poison creeper ability. With the poison creeper in hand, we head on to the den of evil. I decided to name him Slinky, as he slinks around like a slinky going downstairs. Yes, yeah, Slinky. Kill them well. We find that Slinky is quite the efficient killer, and without a single point of physical damage to beat. We clear out the Den of Evil with little to no effort, and head on over to our next objective, the Blood Raven. While Slinky takes care of her, have you pressed the like or subscribe button yet? Please do so, so I don't have to send Slinky out to collect the subscribes for me. <laughs> and with that, Blood Raven goes down. We rescue our favorite storyteller Deckard Kane, put dear old Griswold to a peaceful rest. You will be missed, my good man. Head into an old moldy tomb to find the Countess. I opted to stand to the side and let Slinky deal with her. Slinky took care of her faster than I could say, Slinky, I choose you. I mean seriously, Slinky, come on. We spoke about this beforehand. You ought to at least let me talk about it before you kill him. Ish. Anyways. With the Countess down for the count, we visit the barracks to fetch a hammer for Charcy, only to find a smithy that decided to keep it hostage. Sadly for him, Slinky didn't like him very much. Yep, Slinky really didn't like him. Oh dear. 
things I've seen that just happened to the smith. The hammer returned and Chassis forever grateful to us. It was time to head to the monastery and give Andoriel a taste of my own medicine for once. <laughs> In order to get to Andoriel, you need to reach level 4 of the catacombs where she resides. Once you reach level 4, there's a huge pile of monsters that seem to have taken residence here. Time to clear them out and prepare for Andoriel herself. While we are busy clearing out this monster den and evicting everyone in sight, is there any challenge runs you would like to see in the future? If so, drop them in the comments down below and I'll give them a go. Now for Andoriel herself. Mania involves running around. Bye. Let Slinky commence the thrashing. And for those of you wondering, no, Andoriel is not immune to poison, despite her primarily using poison herself. She is resistant, but not immune. Same thing applies to all bosses and means of progress. None of them are immune to any type of damage, meaning it should be a smooth ride. No foreshadowing whatsoever. After jumping on a merry-go-round with Andoriel, seriously, this is in a chase immune circles. And round and round we go. After a bit of running around, and Doriel goes down with her own medicine. Ha <laughs> ha, my poison is stronger than yours. Now go back to hell where everyone can laugh at you for losing a battle against poison. With and Doriel going down faster than a ton of bricks, that closes the end for Act 1 and sets us up for the beginning of Act 2. We arrive, greet Jiren, only to be assigned sewer duty. Great. Kill a great evil, I need to go running around in sewage. Yay. <laughs> and with that, we head on down to the sewers. And oh my god. Do they ever clean down here? This must be some kind of health code violation. Seriously. Get me out of here. With that tangent out of the way. <clears throat> for that. We encounter Rodderman. Goes down fairly quickly. Providing us with the Roderick Scroll and a Book of Skill. One more to Slinky. As a token of appreciation from the town, we get tasked with reassembling the Roderick staff, which also happens to act as a key to the tomb encasing Duril, with whom we need to destroy. Staff, however, has been broken in twain, meaning we will also need the Roderick Cube in order to reassemble this thing. The cube is first on the list, which we quickly grab from the Halls of the Dead. We drift our way into the maggot lair for the Staff of Kings, and finally, Claw Viper Amulet from the Claw Viper Temple. We fuse the pieces together again using the cube, completing the key and part one of our objectives. Now all that's left to do is find out where the tomb is. After a brief intermission and gaining a moment of clarity, remember we need to head to the Arcane Sanctuary which is located below the palace. We run through the palace and reach the portal that leads to the sanctuary and pits us against a guessing game of which way is the right way. With my infinite knowledge and skills, I will head the right way first try. I said first try. No, first try. There we go. See? First try. Just like I planned. We make our way up the stairs. Kill the summoner with ease. Grab the book to find out which tomb it is we'll need to enter to deal with Duriel and make our way to the Grand Magi Canyon. Taking a look at our quest log, we can see it is the tomb that has a circle marking on it. We head over to the canyon, enter the correct tomb, fight our way down to the Orphesis. That's really what they just decided to name it, on my choice of words. And get ready to fight Duriel, the cold King Larva himself. Duriel is an interesting little worm, larva, demon thing. What even is he? He has a crazy strong cold aura and hits like a truck. Like I found out here rather abruptly. Slinky, I'm sorry I failed at my one job. Staying alive so you can deal with the problem. We are back into the arena. I do a better job of staying alive this time around. Slinky manages to take the W against Duriel. Lord of Cold, who is now but a cold body. I guess he's really up living up to his expectations now, isn't he? <laughs> With Daryl defeated, 
This also means Tyrael is free once again from being locked inside with Duriel. We run onto the back of the tomb, speak to Tyrael, and head back to town to finish up Act 2 and get ready to head into Act 3. Nobody in town felt like giving us any attention, so we head on out in the jungle to drown our sorrows from being paid no attention. Stumble upon a spider infested cave, which let me tell you has some rather large spiders in it. Ironically, I deal with them with poison, find a weird idol, and then wait, is that an eye? Ew! I reluctantly grab that too, take both to town, and suddenly, would you know, the whole town wants to speak to me. I hand over the idol, which by the way turned into quite a trading game between a few members. Seems I got quite lucky fine. After playing Tracy's with the town, I found out from Kane that the eye is part of a weapon that is needed called Kalim's Will. Kalim's Will is required to unseal the entrance to Mephisto, who awaits us in its depths. We head on out on the quest to collect the unfortunate soul's pieces. Must have had a rough time if all that was left was his eye, brain and heart. We grab the gra brain from the flare dungeon and kind of wipe out an entire village in the process. These poor souls. Just happens to be the wrong place at the wrong time. With the brain in hand, we need to head to the bazaar to grab the heart. During our trip into the bazaar, we get a whiff of an old tome that's just waiting to be discovered. We naturally go splunking into the first creepy building we can and hope our nose is on point. And just as I thought, it wasn't. Oh well, on to the next one. Hopefully we will find the tomb in our next Blunking adventure. For now we head on to the sewers, find every known entrance to mankind in the sewers until we finally found level 2, that took an embarrassing long amount of time. And inside level 2 we can find the heart. That leaves only the flail, which is heavily protected by the council members and their minions, along with hundreds of fire hydras that fill the battlefield. Oh wait, I don't have to worry about any of that. That's Slinky's job. I am just chilling in the back. Good luck, Slinky! On our way there, we go splunking into another tomb to find the tome. English, alright. And this time around, we got lucky. Dusty old tomb in the bag. With the dusty old tomb in the bag, we resume our journey to Trevinkle to defeat the council members and get our hands on the flail so that we can create Cullum's will which will get us into Mephisto's little lair. We engage the council members. Slinky fights them until the last breath is drawn while I run around headlessly. We collect the flail. We create the ultimate weapon to destroy the orb. Take a swing, shatter the orb and the flail all at once. Great stuff, ultimate flail thing. You at least did your one job well. On to the Durance of Hate we go. With the way to the Durance of Hate opened, we make our way down to the bottom level, stare at the mess of minions roaming around so they don't come and gang up on us while we try and take down Mephisto, and begin our fight with the creepiest of floaty skellies I have ever seen. We spend a few minutes running around, letting Slinky do his thing on Mephisto, seeing as I am more useless in a fight than pre-order bonuses. I suddenly get hit by a blue orb, taking away more than half of my HP. That woke me up, for sure. I recover, stop panicking, and continue to run for what felt like an eternity. One eternity later. Fisto dies after running a marathon to stay alive. We grab his soul stone and head to Act 4 where the Lord of Terror awaits us. Act 4 isn't super long. Not much to do here as it used to be the last level of the game before Lord of Destruction expansion came out and added Act 5 with a whole new area and things to kill. For Act 4, we gotta head out and find Izul, who betrayed Tyrell, and deal with him accordingly. Destroy Mephisto's Soulstone in the River of Flame, and then unalive the Lord of Terror, Diablo himself, and return Sunshine and Rainbows back to Sanctuary. On that note, we head on up the Plains of Despair where Izul resides, and wouldn't you know it, look who is right here at the entrance. The battle with Izul begins. I send Slinky to attack. He uses poison shot on Izul. 
And his heel goes down with no effort at all. Man, I love Snake. He's such a good worm thing. With his heel out of the picture, we hit up the River of Flame so we can smash the Soul Stone. In the process, some old smithy tried to swindle me into trading him for a hammer. But I showed him and got both the hammer and the Soul Stone. I'm the ultimate trader. We smashed the stone and proceeded to visit Diablo in his lair. Later to find he has been grounded again, he's been sealed in the basement. Against all logic and reason, we break the five seals, which allows Diablo out to see the sunlight once. He runs around, stretches his legs, throws some stuff around, suddenly collapses for some strange reason. Later it turns out he had a cold and all the running around was too much for him. And so, our merry adventure takes us to Act 5, final act of the run. The end is in sight. So far, so good. Here in Haragoth, it seems the demons have mounted a siege against the town. They are the last bastion before the floodgates are open that the demon army spill into the population and wipes out humanity. And we have come here to aid the effort of destroying the armies and stopping Bol once and for all. On our way to Bol, we received thousands of complaints of a safe driving siege master. So we had to make a stop and take care of the problem to raise the morale. And on the way, freed some of our friends who fought a little too hard and didn't know where they were when they woke up. Ah, to be young again. The townsfolk advised that someone by the name of Anya had gone missing. So we slapped on our PI hat and set out to find her. We had a hunch she was in the frozen river being held against her will. Our hunch paid off. Upon speaking to her, we found out she was tricked by Nikla, working for Bol all along. <gasps> what a twist. We meet Anya in town, head on over to Nick Lark's place, show him how very wrong he was about choosing the side of the demons, and get ready for the ultimate test of our men. Showdown of the century. The three ancients show that we are worthy of taking on Bol. We invoke our challenge against the three and start the fight. With this fight, you cannot make a safe portal or leave, as this will reset them the moment you do. And if you die at any point against any of them, this will reset the fight as well, meaning you do have to deal with all three again, even if you killed any of them prior to dying. Between the three barbarians, you have Talek, who has a sword and shield, and does whirlwind attacks, and is quite tanky. You have Madoc, who does throwing weapon attacks, and is quite squishy. And Korlik, who does leap attacks with a polearm weapon. Usually the strategy would be to take out Madoc first, as he has the lead amount, least amount of HP. Followed by Korlik, but Slinky has a mind of his own and just does whatever he wants, taking anything and moves. But eventually he gets the job done and proves his might to the Ancients. With the Ancients defeated and Slinky's might proven, we can now enter Bol's chamber to deal with Bol himself. However, before we are able to take on Bol, we need to take on his minions. There are five waves of minions depicting each act, starting with Act 1 Fallen and a shaman, which we dispatch quite easily, which when follows by Gettys and their summoners, who also get flattened easily. Wait a minute, there's still one left. Oh no, he is poison immune. Who could have seen that coming? Not only is this enemy poison immune, but he also doesn't chase you around the room to lure him out of the area to get the game spawn in the next set of enemies either. I guess that's the end of our poison only run. Is what I would have said if the gods of gaming weren't watching. After running around in the area for a few minutes, the AI suddenly decided to run at me and followed me around. Though not to look the gift, wolf, gift horse in the mouth, I ran down and managed to lose him in the other side of the arena, allowing the next wave to spawn and the run to continue. We really dodged a bullet with that one. And with that, we deal with more council members and their hydras for Act 3 and Act 4 Venom Lords. And then the next big challenge, Bol's minions himself. Bol's minions are extremely terrifying. They're large, they have massive health pools, they hit hard, they bash, and they're just outright ugly. But don't worry, I've cooked up the ultimate strategy to deal with them today. The strategy is simple. Run away! Lure them out, head back up, and Bol will think you defeated them, allowing you to challenge him. We follow Bol into the Chamber of Secrets through a weird looking mirror, because that is always a good idea. Only to find we entered a weird sex dungeon. Bol has already whipped out the tentacles as a welcome. We run away from the madness, 
confront him about his weird habits. He doesn't take too kindly to that and calls his twin brother to teach us a lesson. Linky, on the other hand, has another plan. He pops out of the ground, infects them both with the common cold, and just patiently waits as the clock ticks away. Paul meets his end to the common cold, and thus bringing an end to the game, answering the question. Can you beat Diablo with only poison damage? The answer is yes. I hope you enjoyed the video of Slinky's Adventures. Please remember to like and subscribe for more videos to come and help the channel grow. If you want to see another cha challenge run, click on the video or visit my channel and take your pick. If there are any other videos you would like to see of other games or challenge runs, post them in the comments. If there are multiple requests, I will put them in a wheel, spin them and we can see what comes up. As always, see you in the next one.